Hi, everybody. Meet up, meet up. I'm Bruno Pizzalis, the head of the foundry by Mokta. Uh, first, of, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for your presence at the opening of 4C, 4F, 5, 6, 4, 5 exhibition today. A super project. So I will hand over now to Marina, Art Liaison, and Mokta to get you know a bit more about the foundry mission. And after her, we will talk with uh, Filippo Lorenzin, uh, Kevin Abosch, of course. On Friday 14, we open our space on SuperOver as a result of our commitment in the digital art space. Now it will be possible to admire and buy some of the uh, highest artworks and artists uh, into the NFT space. So today, before visiting the exhibition, we will have the opportunity to chat with all the people involved in the super project. So I will hand over now to Marina, Art Liaison and Mokta to get you know a bit more about the foundry mission. And after her, we will talk with uh, Filippo Lorenzin, uh, Kevin Abosch, of course, and the guys from Arium that helped us to build the space. And in the end, we will have the participation of Serena Tabacchi, the co-founder and director of Mocha. So Marina, do you think like you would like to explain more about uh, the are I mean the, the, the foundry residency and everything we're planning to do in the next month? Uh, sure, Bruno, thank you. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Marina Ribakova, and at the foundry, I liaise with artists and patrons to make sure that uh, the projects the artists are creating and developing during this uh, one month long residency, uh, they culminate in an exciting exhibition project, maybe an IRL event and uh, lots, of, um, uh, lots of exciting things, of course, among all the collection drop on Super Rare. And uh, the Foundry has a mission to democratize the digital art market and to educate uh, to curate art, which Filippo will uh, tell you uh, about in a moment, and to, um, uh, to capture the digital art history for generations to come. So it's a very uh, broad vision into the future, very future oriented that we are working on. And we, uh, we have planned out the next four months and we'll be hosting five artists in residence for each month. And every month will be um, uh, terminating with an Arium exhibition since we're collaborating with Arium, uh, the beautiful space that we are all meeting in today. Uh, and our first inaugural uh, collection slash drop slash residence project uh, on the foundry uh, on super rare spaces is of course Kevin Abosch. Our future vision is to become a DAO, uh, a system where um, it's uh, hyper democratic and hyper decentralized and it's not us or the curators who take the decision on which artists will join the residency, but rather the community gets to vote and choose. And then the artists are always accompanied by a curator throughout their residency journey. Um, besides that, we've al also come up with a patron figure. So someone who is more like a mentor to uh, advise to the artists and to give them perspectives that are not purely artistic but maybe um, they come from the industry they come from technology or they come from finance or general um, uh, general fields of interest to these uh, creators so a patron is uh, another figure that we believe will elevate uh, the the residency experience for uh, participants and uh, with that i hand over to filippo our curator Oh my gosh, thank you, Marina. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you all for being here in this beautiful space in Arium. Um, so let me introduce myself. My name is Filippo Lorenzin. I am the, the artistic director of Mokta and of course of the Foundry as well. Um, I overview all the, all the projects developed by Mokta. So exhibitions, art residency programs, lectures, and much, much, much more. Uh, my role is to ensure that our every single initiative pursues the mission of the museum, to aid in the discovery and experience of contemporary digital art, while working to preserve knowledge and set the standards for new digital art forms. 
Um, at the Foundry, our approach to curation is focused on artists responding to the creative opportunities of new media. Our mission is to foster a collaborative process between, uh, actually, among artists, curators, and our community. We aim at supporting an experimental approach towards digital art and digital tools beyond NFTs, um, and including NFTs, of course. For us, curatorial, curatorial work means to take care of the artist and provide them the, the context to grow and experiment. This is, for us, a two-way process where it's not only the artist gaining um, from the collaboration, but you know, us as well. Working with creative minds who propose critical approaches to technology means to go beyond the mainstream narratives and offer new perspectives to our community. Um, as you can imagine, this is one of the many reasons why we are so proud uh, we started this program with Kevin. Um, in his works, he addresses the nature of identity and value by posing ontological questions and responding to sociologic dilemmas. And we were fascinated by his approach to technology and the way we as humans use it to communicate with each other. We were particularly thrilled to have him involved due to, again, to his approach to the blockchain. Um, Kevin explores the creative potential of the technology to make art instead of using it to present art or to display art. A conceptual practice that makes him one of the most interesting artists working in this field. Um, so as Bruno uh, said earlier, the series Kevin presents is titled, is titled 4C, 4F, 5645. So love in hexadecimal code. And is composed of 14 animated digital works, individually and collectively forming a treatise on the on the apprehension of fear through love. Um, at this point, I suppose it's much better if I leave the microphone to Kevin because I'm sure he will be much better than me at presenting the series. Kevin, can you please tell more about this project? Absolutely, thanks for having me. Thank you to the, uh, the Mokta and Foundry team and to Ariam for setting up this beautiful space environment to, uh, to show my latest work. Um, so, I mean, you, you, described, you described a bit of it there. Um, uh, this is uh, my way of trying to uh, make some sense out of love in as much as it can be uh, made sense of. Um, you know, there's love as a figure of speech. There's a love in the literal sense, uh, but as strong and as clear um, as love may seem at times, uh, as a concept, I think it's nebulous at, at best, it's uh, quixotic, it's mysterious, hard to describe, and uh, the context in which uh, it's, it's used, uh, the word love, or any derivative, loved, loves, lover, um, uh, it, 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 oh, sorry, I just, uh, something's going on with my battery there. Am I still there? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, the, 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 the way it's used influences its, its emotional value. Um, and so, yes, it's real, but it's hard to define. So using um, a, a method that I employ more often than not in my, in my work, certainly in my crypto work, I start with input data. Uh, in this case, uh, it was, um, the use of the word love and its derivatives uh, across a couple hundred thousand uh, social public social media posts. Um, now, what am I trying to do here? Am I trying to scientifically uh, distill value out of, out of uh, the use of the word love and its context? No, uh, it's more of a ritualistic uh, process that I go through while I'm using, you know, relatively sophisticated tools and, 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 and methodology, um, I work in a feedback loop with artificial intelligence. Um, uh, it informs me, it surfaces some insights, some, some, something that perhaps I, ha I wouldn't have noticed on my own. Uh, it informs a subsequent decision. And I go back in a, in a loop, in a feedback loop with the, with, the, with the tech until the work is done. Um, 
I believe that there's sacred knowledge in uh, in hexadecimal alphanumerics or alphanumerics uh, of all sorts. Uh, I'm talking about also the language of abstraction, the language of encryption. Uh, emotional truths can be surfaced uh, more readily, I think, when we approach them not from an intellectual logic based uh, perspective, but um, from an emotional perspective. Um, and that's uh, and that's uh, you know where I where I came with with this. So on the, on the, when you see these works, I think from a distance, um, you you are impacted first by a large red field, uh, which for me uh, uh, gives a sense of the 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 strength and clarity of love when we when we uh, when we feel it uh, when we uh, uh, when we're experiencing it. And the alphanumerics, which are uh, sort of uh, manifested here in a in a in a rather low contrast uh, form, not they don't they're not really popping uh, off off the off the field, but they're a little bit. If they weren't already uh, <laughs> impossible to uh, analyze intellectually, they they certainly I haven't made it any easier by um, by by presenting the the alphanumerics in this uh, sort of foggy state. Um, but what I would like of the of the of the audience when you when you you know stand so to speak and virtually stand in front of one of these, um, I would like you to uh, actively try not to think about solving a puzzle or intellectually looking at the elements in the work, but rather just submitting to the mystery and submitting to the majesty of love. Um, by by allowing yourself to be emotionally impacted. I think there's sacred knowledge even within the space, the space between uh, alphanumerics. Um, and uh, and you know, and love is is a very is, is a very personal uh, a very personal thing too. Um, and so there there are fourteen works here, and and I, they're all operating uh, on 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 the one hand uh, in, in the same way, and but they're they're all quite different. I think they all have something different to offer. And uh, in case anyone's wondering, the titles were not just, uh, you know, pulled out of uh, the air. Um, they're quite specific to the, the, the manifestations uh, you see before you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, it was very enriching. Thanks again for the beautiful work and uh, uh, you're willing to, um, you know, make some time to talk every time about your art. Um, so next one I, I would like to um, come up and talk uh, is Dan, co-founder of Farium, that will uh, uh, explain uh, better the opportunity uh, into um, making a virtual exhibition in a space like Farium. So Dan, it's your turn. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Um, hi, all. I'm, I'm very, very glad to be here today and to be launching and helping launch um, the Mokta Foundry project and especially this, this fantastic collection by, by Kevin that we just heard about. Um, so many thanks to you, everyone at uh, Mokta and Super Rare Spaces and Kevin. Um, so I'm Aiden. Uh, Dan is actually uh, in, the, in the actual space today. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Arium along with Dan. Um, and for a bit about Arium, uh, we are working to enable digital artists to create immersive virtual experiences like the one you're in now, um, with a focus on really supporting exploration into new ways to collaboratively create share and experience art online together beyond just the 2D experience that is um, available when we share art in, in existing platforms. So how, how do we do this? Um, we've built a creator platform which enables creatives to build unique 3D worlds and to showcase digital artworks and NFTs and host interactive live events like the one you're all in now. Uh, so when Mokta approached us to build a space for the Foundry residency, we were extremely excited to take this on for a number of reasons. Um, primarily that the, the unique design challenges of building a single space that could work for 
um, multiple sets of artists and multiple sets of experiences over the coming months. Um, and we were extremely pleased to work with a fantastic um, metaverse architect um, to, to take on this design challenge and in particular to explore the, the creative possibilities inherent in having a, a modular environment which could which could have some elements which shifted and morphed to reflect the needs of the particular artist or opening um, such as the, the one um, you're in today. Um, so thanks again to, to Mokta and to Kevin Abash for, for letting us create this um, experience with you and um, enjoy the rest of your time in it. Turn it back over to Bruno, thank you. Thank you, Aidan. Sorry if I called you Dan before, but I, <laughs> I was thinking that he was actually going to, uh, to speak on behalf of Harry. Uh, anyway, um, Serena Tabaki will be with us very shortly, so I will uh, uh, take the opportunity to, um, yeah, talk about uh, a little more about the the residencies that we actually gonna um, begin. Uh, from the next month. So we um, are working on our uh, Discord channel that will be the starting point for new artists uh, in uh, joining Mocha. Um, I, I think it will be uh, you know, a, a great opportunity to create a discussion about digital art, uh, which is never enough for us. Um, we always try to um, support uh, emerging digital artists, but especially the discussion about that. Um, the NFT space is a super opportunity for all the artists, but uh, is when an institution like us that provides means um, to help artists and the growth of digital art in general, that is when, you know, uh, technology can be very helpful. So, as I was saying to you, uh, Serena will be with us uh, shortly. So I don't know if any someone else from the Mokta team wants to add anything about the discussion. Marina, Filippo. Yeah, maybe I will uh, make a quick announcement of the upcoming residencies and the participants of these residencies, because uh, I know lots of people are curious about who else is coming next. And up next, we have Render Fruit that you may know for her very specific visual language. We have a duo of Sofia Crespo and Felikan McCormick. Uh, we have Frenetic Void as the third one. Um, and we have Nacho Frades. And these are the ones that are going to take over the foundry uh, over the next month. And then uh, with Kevin, actually, we are going to be having an IRL exhibition in Italy. Uh, which will be announced very shortly. Something we're very excited about and um, yeah, uh, a very uh, monumental and uh, uh, cool project that we're preparing these days. Maybe we can say something about the, the, the display um, because something I wanted to ask to Kevin is, um, when Kevin, when do you make your works? <laughs> because of course you can't make others' works. When you make your works, um, do you already imagine the scale of these works? Like, do you imagine that they should be on display? I don't know, um, like on a screen, big as I don't know, as a as a big television monitor, or do you imagine it, you know, like projected on a wall, or do you imagine? I mean, is it something that somehow informs, that shapes, you know, your 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 practice or not? Yeah, no, for sure. I think about that. I I, I think it depends. Sometimes I'll do a site-specific uh, commission uh, installation, and it it I'll know that they already have existing, uh, you know, like a video wall, or or I'm going to be bringing in the hardware, but I have an idea of the space. But in general, um, I, I, I like it to sort of be able to you port it to any you know viewing device um, that you want. 
Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the case of these works, I've thought about it a lot. I actually did some tests because, because of their low contrast nature, I, I was actually a little concerned uh, that if they were shown, for instance, on a giant, uh, um, a giant screen outside, like on the side of a building, um, I don't know if you, you've ever seen those, but like when you're standing up close to it, the, the pixels are massive. It's a different technology. Uh, you, you know that they use to to show, and I and uh, fortunately I was uh, yeah. In fact, you, no, none of you know about this, but a couple of days ago I was able to have a friend of mine in uh, in New York um, do a quick test, and I saw a picture of it, and even from the picture I could see that it, it read it read from a distance. So yeah, you know you just yeah worry about yeah. then of then of course you have to worry ab ab about uh, uh, it. Does it look the same across different devices? which it never does, you know? So maybe, you know, the red somewhere else looks more orange or maybe it looks more brown. And I, ideally I'm able to have some, some say in that uh, or, or, you know, but, but probably I'm not. So for all I know, somewhere in the world, they see these as green because they have I mean, a broken monitor. That's one of the most uh, exciting, let's say things about digital art, isn't it? You can't really control which, devices or which, uh, yeah, which devices the public will use to, uh, yeah. you know. To and, and then of course, the, the aspect ratio is huge. And that's why I'm really enjoying, I, I just want to say again, I, I really admire what the Arium team has done here. Also, it's open, it's airy. That was another concern was maybe they have to be seen in a dark environment to, mm. uh, to, to fully pop. But no, I think they look, I think they look great in this Kind of luminous space uh, with nature just you know peeking off to the edge of the frame and 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 in this case all these works are square but and then that's obviously not a problem in the metaverse but as you know in in real world uh, exhibitions getting your hands on a square monitor is is no easy task so uh you know that's one of the positives of the metaverse isn't it <laughs> yeah Oh. Hey, Kevin, we're gonna deal with the square problem in uh, uh, the <laughs> high real exhibition, so I can't wait for it. Great. So anyway, Serena just uh, joined us, and I would like to um, let her, um, you know, say hi to you and explain a, a bit more about all the great things we do in a mocktail. So hi, Serena, how are you doing? Thanks, Bruno. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight or this morning, wherever you're based. So we're here also to inaugurate the space that Arum has wonderfully created and also to bring Kevin's work to life in a virtual environment. So we wanted to also thank Kevin for believing in this project and also being the first artist to open up the space. Um, so you may know already about the Foundry, but the idea we had was to bring curated content to you in an accessible way, and also to give artists a space and a voice to be seen and heard. Um, this way, curators have come together. We have Filippo, Marina, and Bruno here from the Mokta team, but there's actually seven of us working across different fields um, that we try to make that possible. We've been running this for about two and a half years now, and uh, through the support of Super Rare and everyone that has voted for our proposal through the first Super Rare Space Race, we were able to actually open the space for the first time and to bring an artistic residency uh, to life. Even if it's virtual, we're gonna try and uh, make it, you know, a blend of virtual and physical exhibitions and encounters that we're going to run in the future. But I don't know if Kevin had a chance to speak about the collection yet, uh, but if you haven't, um, you did. Okay, wonderful, okay. I see you guys nodding, so thank you for that. Um, I probably would ask you then, Kevin, uh, since you're going, you know, you've opened up the space with us and you believed very much in the project and uh, inaugurating the space, I also would love for you to share a few words um, in terms of like suggestions of things that you would have liked to explore or maybe you would like future artists to explore um, in the context of artistic residencies that are now running virtually. So any thoughts on that? 
Yeah, that's that's uh, well. <laughs> you could have given me a little bit of uh, <laughs> preparation for that one. Um, let me think. Well, look, every artist is I different. Every every that. artist has a different approach. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Um, every, uh, every artist has, I think, a different approach. And I think what I've enjoyed uh, in working with, with uh, you, uh, with Mokta and the Foundry, is that um, you, you've been very respectful of, of my process. And uh, I mean, that's been very, very clear. And so you, you, you have suggestions, you're there to support. Uh, it's, kind of, it's a very nurturing environment. Um, and I think that's all an artist can can ask for, um, because I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for someone necessarily to collaborate with. I'm not necessarily looking for um, ideas, uh, and I'm not necessarily looking for someone to shape. Especially in my case, I've been doing this so long, but like my my treatment of the subject. But I'm always looking for um, I'm always looking for uh, feedback from people whose feedback means something to me. And um, I think that your entire team has a depth um, that, that, I res that I respect and uh, it resonates with me. Um, and so, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it's gonna be interesting. I know some of the names you, you mentioned there, like Sophie Crespo and, you know, I, you know I'd be it'll be interesting for you, I think, uh, this journey to see how different, you know, I mean, I think you know, I'm, I'm not saying she's not, but I'm saying I'm, I'm pretty easy going, right? Um, and maybe, maybe the next person's not, um, you know, but that'll be, uh, you know, that'll be, that'll be fun to, uh, to explore. Um, also, you know, maybe pushing technological boundaries. Um, I think for this, we, we pretty much worked within, you know, existing, uh, you know, technology, nothing, nothing, uh, you know, Nobel Prize winning, uh, but uh, I mean, the, hopefully, hopefully the work conceptually is strong enough. But um, yeah, I, I, I think I think if it, it if in your position to support the artist, because sometimes the artists, uh, oh, a cat that has been missing for two days has just showed up. Hold on, give me one second here. Cats this is very important. Cats. Come on in. <laughs> there you go. Okay, there you go. Okay. No, 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 cats. It's a. It's been a bad week. One cat died. The other one was oh. missing, but she's back. Good. So uh, where was I? Uh, <laughs> where was I? Um, the uh, yeah, uh, I, I I think I think uh, some are and okay. That's the other thing is that I'm a very technical artist. Uh, I'm I'm uh, very much involved, you know, uh, with technology, hands on. And some artists in this space actually aren't, and they and they lean heavily on on uh, on support from uh, others who are technically minded. And I think. That you'll probably serve as uh, a liaison if you don't hands on yourself, but to liaise artists with those with the technical ability skills that perhaps the artist you know doesn't have. Um, and uh, like it, you know, like I think you just I, I see you guys as there to make dreams come true. <laughs> so, Thanks, uh, Gavin. You know, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that will be a challenge for us as well. You know, shaping how curation will work digitally. I know there's been a few books written now, but I would love to actually write that book while we live through the book <laughs> we might be writing in the future. So um, it's definitely a challenge, I think, for us, for the audience and for artists. But I think what I've enjoyed the most working at Mokta and creating this project with the team is that every day we get a new challenge and we deal to face it in different ways. But we always came across interesting projects and uh, we're now able to go one step further and make these way more accessible. So hopefully this will be a great opportunity for more artists to join the residency. But before we all go, I think something I would love to share and also get Aidan's um, opinion is how do you see curation as well, working in a, in a virtual environment and how do you think a metaverse could actually enhance curation of digital art? Uh, yeah, that, that's a, a great question. Um, I think the, the primary way that a, well, first of all, I, I don't usually use the term metaverse because yeah, it's, it's such an amorphous <laughs> term. It's a, it's a term that means anything and everything to, to, the, to whomever you speak with. Um, 
And so it's a term that's both very powerful because it can mean so many things uh, and very confusing because it's, uh, it means so many different things. Um, but to, I guess to get to that, the question of like, how can working in the metaverse creatively, producing work in the metaverse, curating work in the metaverse help redefine the act of curation for digital art, for art writ large, um, I think it provides a new set of venues, if you will. It's a new way to bring context and story to work that may exist uh, in more like catalog style uh, platforms, which tend to um, not to not to pick on Instagram, but Instagram has been this great boon for artists to be able to share their work. Um, but the way that your work is presented is, is very much out of your control. It's in the control of an algorithm. It's in the control of a system that, that decides how your work should be presented with respect to other people's work, with respect to um, your own work. You have no control if it's time bound, if it's um, intending to advertise yeah. something. You, you really don't have that control. And I think bringing that control back into the hands of the creatives, whether that's the artists themselves or curators or curators bringing groups of artists together, I think is really what these metaverse experiences allow for. Um, and then adding this additional layer of doing that collaboratively, creating, sharing, and experiencing this art all together. I think is the real the real power there. Thank you, thank you. And I think to add to that point is also that it's custom made. So you can allow artists to have works as big as they want and to have the audience immerse themselves within a work. So on that note, I would love to invite everyone to step into the RM space and experience Kevin's work up close because the beauty of them can really be hypnotizing. I love this deep red and the numbers and the concept behind it is truly powerful because love is something we do experience every day, but often we forget that we actually have those kind of emotions and we are, you know, fear, we feel fear, we feel, um, you know, we might be shy about it. So I think it's a great opportunity to also look at something belongs to all of us and is there for us to enjoy. So once again, thank you so much, Kevin, for joining the Foundry Residency and for creating such beautiful works. Um, Aidan and Dan and the team at Arium for making this uh, happening in the metaverse and to the wonderful team at Mokda and Super Rare that also uh, created the space for us to, to bring you all together and experience digital art. Filippo, did you want to add something? <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, Serena, and you know, thank you, Aidan, thank you, Kevin, thank you, everybody, for, again, for coming here tonight or this morning or this afternoon. It really depends on where you are, I, su I suppose. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope you will, you know, you will find the time to you know, to enjoy the works by Kevin in this space. And, you know, I, I hope that, again, this will be only the first of many other times you will visit, you know, Arium spaces and in particular, the Foundry space. Wonderful. Thank you all. Enjoy the exhibitions and see you soon at the Foundry. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Ta-ta.